We are live from Morgan Stanley's uh, headquarters for what is a special interview. James Gorman will be retiring as Morgan Stanley's CEO at the end of the year. Of course, that's not too many days from now, but he will be staying on as the company's executive chairman. He joins me now in a CNBC exclusive. We've done a lot of these through the years. This may be our last. I don't want you to tear up yet, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not going to be tearing up, uh, but it's great to have you back to Morgan Stanley, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be here. Um, you know, so many different ways we could start this, but I am curious. You have to be sort of thinking about the last almost 14 years that you've been running the bank, not to mention, obviously, you were here for a number of years prior to that. So when you think about the totality of your time here, and particularly leading the organization, what do you think, and, and how do you think about it? I think um, to lead anything is a privilege, um, and to be given an opportunity like this during, you know, in, in working life, if you happen to be in business, happen to be in, in financial services, it's an incredible honor. So I guess the, you know, the reflective side of me would say how lucky I've been. Um, you try and, you know, one of our core values on the wall when you came in this morning is do the right thing. You try and do the right thing. You make some mistakes along the way. You get... You get judged in, in these jobs like you do in your job, David, and, and you know, that's, that's, you rise to that. Um, you, don't let it, you don't let it get to you. Uh, but the main thing I take away is, is what a privilege to have led such an incredible institution. Just I'm so proud of the, the quality of the people, the values, the way we got through COVID. I mean, there's so, so many moments through it, and we'll talk about some of the business side. Sure. But it's more the, the human side and role of leadership. Now, one of the, the, a lot of people want to be leaders, but they don't want uh, the tough bit that goes with it, which is you get to make decisions. And your decisions prove to be right or wrong over time. So the accountability, and that's something I've always sort of risen to. I like being the guy making the call. And if you like that and, in, and you're in position to make calls that can really move institutions, in our case, obviously, a global bank, uh, you know, incredible privilege of a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, well, you've made plenty of those decisions, and obviously one of the key ones was repositioning sort of the business of Morgan Stanley over these last few years, particularly when it comes to asset management. I mean, is that what people are going to think about when they think about the Gorman era? What do you think they should think when they look back on mm -hmm. these almost 14 years that you've been leading Morgan Stanley? Um, you know, we came out of the crisis as the... Uh, the last institution uh, that was about to fail. We, you know, it's like planes. I described it like planes landing at, at Newark Airport. And if you look out over the um, Hudson River from Manhattan, and you can see them on a clear day like today at you know 2,000 feet, 5,000, 15,000, 30,000, then all the way back, uh, you know, up the river. And you know. Bear Stearns landed and sort of crash landed and got scooped up by um, J.P. Morgan. Uh, Lehman landed and just crashed and they sweep the stuff off the runway. Merrill landed and got scooped up by Bank of America because it was limping down the runway. Uh, you know, GE, um, AIG, uh, AIG and, and so it went. And we were like coming and we were at 3,000 feet and there was still debris on the runway. We were leaking oil. And, you know, that, that was the moment. So the, the ship that we, or the plane in that analogy that we, we took over was a really damaged vehicle, but we managed to land. And with the help of TARP and with the help of, obviously, our, our large investor, MUFG, we brought ourselves out of that immediate crisis zone. But just when we come out of it, we went into another crisis, which was Moody's were going to downgrade us three notches. And over the next two years, we fought this incredibly... Um, tough battle to convince them that they were looking at us from a historical perspective, not from a current or forward-looking perspective. So it was, as an institution, as I look back on it, it was more just how do you go from uh, f survival, fragility, healing, um, you know, balanced and then strong. And each of those have almost been different jobs along the journey. And right now we're strong. I mean, wherever the stock is trading, and I think it was up this morning, which is kind of nice. Uh, but but there's unambiguously we're strong. So, but there were several different jobs, if you will, along the way that required drawing on different skills and different team members.